Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt, and this is the BMW Z4. Last week we covered all of the coolest and most interesting features with this car, but today we finished our week with it, and we're hitting the highlights, the best in the rest, starting with the rest. First thing we'll talk about is the driver assist. Now with all the impressive tech that BMW has, there does seem to be a slight demerit in terms of the driver assistance suite here. And even still, it's a shade of gray. You get adaptive cruise and you get lane keep, but it's not got the traffic jam assist that some of the more advanced BMW systems come with. So it's still good, just not quite as good and comprehensive, I guess, as an X5. But I guess price-wise, it probably shouldn't be, right? And number two, we're gonna talk about the culture. Now, this is something pretty much entirely out of BMW's control and not the fault of the Z4, but just something that I've noticed personally and I've noticed through my experience online and part of the car community. This is the channel's first BMW press loan. So again, thanks to Jeff and BMW USA for hooking it up. However, when I found out I was getting a Z4 and it wasn't the M40i, my immediate thought was kind of, oh crap, no one on the internet seems to care about the Z4 and especially not the base powertrain. So no one's gonna watch the video and BMW will never send me a car again. And admittedly, that tied into my own understanding of the culture. I wasn't as excited as I would have been for say an M340i. But then here's the thing, I drove the car. And within the first 10 minutes of driving this car and playing with it, I realized we have a hidden gem right here. It's super fun, tossable, and sharp. And sure, the bigger motor would add some drama, but I don't feel like I really need it. So I guess this is a long-winded way of saying the Z4, even in base powertrain, deserves so much more respect and attention than it's getting, because it's a brilliant little roadster. So with that, let's get into all the best things going on with the Z4. Now number one and my favorite thing is the drive here. I know we just mentioned this and this is probably the biggest thing that I was surprised by. This thing is a little riot machine. When you have something as potent as the B58 straight six in the lineup, you half expect the four cylinder to be kind of neutered, but this thing still rips. With the top down and the wind blowing, it feels fast. The sound is pretty good too. And the gear shifts are sharp and give you a, a little noise and some drama to go along with it. And the front end is bitey and aggressive. You've got great tires on here, uh, mid corner from these Continental Sport Contact sixes. And then the back end will rotate with traction off. You've got that M uh, limited slip differential. Again, part of the dynamic handling package. It really transforms what you get here. You get adaptive suspension here. And since it does have the M adaptive dampers, it's stiff and disciplined in sport mode, but you can relax it off in comfort and eco to have something that is genuinely nice and easy to drive day to day. It's a little stiff still, but it is a roadster. It's kind of supposed to be that way, right? But ultimately, I was super impressed when I got behind the wheel of this thing. It's light, it's tossable, the chassis is brilliant, and it is sincerely very, very fun. And number two, we're gonna talk practicality, and this is where most roadsters really suffer, is in day-to-day -day usability. But here, this Z4 is worlds more practical. You have way more space in the trunk, the capacity has to be at least double. And you even have a pass-through to the main cabin, which is kind of funny to me. You do have a glove box, and you have a bigger center console with actual built-in cup holders and a place to put your phone. And then speaking of your phone, you have a cubby under the dash with a wireless charger and other chargers. Plus, you have a small shelf behind the seat, and you can fit people comfortably over six feet in here. This added practicality makes me legitimately see this thing as something that you could use as a daily or even a weekend getaway car. You throw a couple weekender bags in here, and you're good to go, no problem. And then there's the engine. <laughs> Under the long hood here, you have BMW's B48 2.0-liter twin scroll turbocharged four-cylinder, and it's a great little engine. Here it's pumping out 255 horsepower, but it's now got a 48-volt mild hybrid system, kind of smooths things out and adds a little bit of electric torque in between gear changes. It feels really, really crisp, and it's rated at about 28 mpg combined, which is of about what I've been seeing this week. If you baby it, you'll get better, and of course, if you drive it hard, you'll get worse, but that's like with anything. Uh, another cool thing is that you can go into the head unit, and there's an energy flow chart, which will show you exactly how you're recouping and deploying energy from the hybrid system, and that's something that you really only get in more robust hybrid systems. And then on the sporty side of that, you have a telemetry component that'll show you your uh, horsepower and your braking and your throttle input. So it's powerful, it's quick, it's efficient. I mean, to be honest, no one really touches BMW for powertrains today. And number four, we have to talk about the roof. The Z4 comes exclusively as a ragtop, and it's pretty good. 
The soft top keeps weight down and down lower in the car, which helps handling. It's also pretty refined and quiet with the top up on the highway. But if you want to put it down, you can do so while moving as long as you're going under 32 miles an hour. And then it'll take about 10 and a half seconds to go up or down, which is pretty quick. But let's say you are cruising with the top down and you get a call. Well, you have these little microphones right here in the A pillar blocked from the wind. So you have crystal clear call quality. And number five, we're talking technology. This may be a tiny little roadster weekender getaway fun car, but it's packed with all of the modern stuff and modern technology that you'd expect iDrive 8 hasn't found its way to the Z4 yet, but that means you still get all the physical controls you're used to. You've got a 10-inch center screen for your infotainment with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You've even got reverse camera and the reverse assist breadcrumbs, which is so awesome and I don't know why I love it so much, but I do. You also got cool displays like your sport display and your telemetry. And it's kind of cool that these things are usually reserved for super sporty versions, but you have it here on the base powertrain and also the energy flow screen to see where your power is going. Again, usually reserved for more comprehensive and robust hybrid systems, but you get it here. And then you've got a digital instrument cluster and a head-up display. And you've got some cool ambient light to spice it all up. And sixth, we're gonna touch briefly on styling. Now, I think this is a pretty handsome little car, and I also think it captures the classic Roadster essence really well. It's got the long hood and the short deck out back and it's draped in gorgeous Portimao blue paint. It really looks fantastic in midday sunlight like we have here. I would either have this or the Thunder Night Purple if it was my personal car, but we've also got the shadow line package to black out all of our accents. And we've got upgraded 19 inch wheels wrapped in Continental Performance tires, which helps on our handling aspect. And we've got red M Sport brakes peeking out from underneath. And then around back, it's a simple dual circle exhaust design, and you've got a nice long third brake light. It's totally handsome, and you could be too with a new pair of sunglasses from Blenders this year. Link down in the description for 20% off. And seventh and finally, we're gonna talk price. These Z4s started about $53,600, and this one as tested is about 64.5. And yeah, that's big money on the face of it, but when you consider that a Porsche Boxster, the next most logical comparison you could make to this thing starts at 65K, and that's for the four cylinder option. And then we all know how Porsche money can go up from there. So is it a lot of money? Yes. Is it still the most value for money? Also, yes. So that's the best and the rest of the BMW Z4. And I have to say, I am shocked and appalled that this car does not have more buzz. I am thoroughly and comprehensively impressed with this thing. So again, thanks to Jeff and BMW for giving us our first BMW press loan. It was very cool, a lot of fun. So thank you to you guys. And then also look forward to the i7 next week. We'll see you then.